You're listening to the Meat Magazine Interviews Radio Show on Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Meat Magazine. And last week on September 11th of 2015, I had a really, really good, interesting, informative interview with author Cola Booth. Unfortunately, her call dropped, and but the good news is I have her back on the show to finish up our interview. I'm going to check to see if she's on the line here. Hello, Cola? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Um, I I wanted to pick up where we left off in the first interview, but I, I just wanted you uh-huh. to reintroduce yourself and let the people know a little bit about you. Well, I'm Cola Booth, and I'm, I'm a best-selling author. I was born in Omdurman, Sudan. I was uh, My parents were murdered in front of me when I was six years old, and I was adopted by an African-American family, Marvin and Claudine Johnson, and raised in Washington, D.C. Um, I went back as an adult to find my roots in Sudan and the rest of North Africa. I'm half Egyptian, so I went there and... You know, unfortunately, for a time in 1996, I became the mistress of Osama bin Laden, and that was the first thing that made me really famous in America um, before people started to read my actual books that I write. And um, that's, uh, you know, I wrote daytime soap operas and I've done just about everything, so. Right. Now, you've been in several different places in Africa, as well as you lived in the Middle East at one point. Is that correct? Yes. In Israel, I lived and have been all over it. But Israel, I lived there the longest. Right. Now, when when we left off in the last part of our interview, you were informing us about the whole Palestine situation. And you said that you're pro-Israel. You're not really for Palestine, that they enslaved Africans for many years and that Saudi Arabia actually kicked out 2 million Ethiopians, which I, I had no idea about. Um, right, I, I wanted, right, because, I wanted, you know, the Western media, they try to portray Israel as this racist white conglomerate. Um, they don't show you the whole picture of the Middle East. Um, a lot of people are shocked when they go and Google the news story about 2 million Ethiopians being kicked out of Saudi Arabia. And those were citizens. It was different, whereas where Israel kicked out 50,000 black Muslim migrants. And let's not forget, Israel gave them a check for $3,500 each, which is why I wish people would stop demonizing Israel, because for a lot of people from that region, we are so poor and destitute, we need Israel to be there for us to go get that check. Sometimes we need to go get kicked out of Israel just to get that check, because with $3,500, you can live off that for like two years in some place like Sudan, and you can live really good. And so people aren't thinking um, when they try to um, always try to empower and put these Muslim, um, Arab Muslim uh, countries in situations, you know, claiming they're brown brothers and they are more important. No, they're racist. They are more vicious and racist than any Israeli. Absolutely absurd how black Americans sit around talking about because the Palestinians are brown that they are somehow uh, a part of us or care about us or related to us. No, they're using black Americans because black Americans are naive and they don't know the background, the whole story, the whole history. They don't know that in any Arab country, the people filling up the jail are black men whose hands have been chopped off. You know, they don't understand that. They don't even look at that part, that black people are slaves in those Arab societies. Meanwhile, in Israel, we have black people being elected to rule public office, and quite a few of them. Miss Israel was a black Ethiopian woman. Um, They just reported about the black comic whose TV show has been canceled by all the Arab Muslim countries. He is an Arab, you know, type show that runs. Only Israel is going to continue his show. And I posted that on my Facebook the other day. So if people go to Kolobu Facebook, you can read the story of this person 
because they see black people as slaves, so they don't want to see a comedy show with a black man with a family and running a company or, you know, and so it's absolutely ridiculous trying to act like Israel is some special kind of racism and the Arabs are not, you know. Oh, absolutely, and uh, one of the things that you said uh, last week when we spoke was that black people are called really racist names in the streets and they're basically trying to speak up for the Palestinians and if they go to do activism over there, it doesn't even matter why they're there, they'll be called a slave and the N-word and stuff like that. And, right, you know, oh, kinda, yeah. It, well, now, and we have proof. And, like, Dream Hampton, she's a well-known black American activist and who went there, and the women were calling her a bead as she walked down the street, and she wrote about that. And then we have Cynthia McKinney, the black women uh, politician here, who went there, and it's on video of a little Palestinian children in the background saying she's a nice monkey lady in Arabic. And so, you know, it's just for me being black and Arabic and from the region, I just get so sick of all of the the Hollywood image that black American people transpose on the people from that region. And when I say Hollywood, what they do is the good guys are the Palestinians just because they're brown and the Israelis are the bad guys. No, that is a total farce. A black person, a transsexual, a criminal black man, anybody like that can live better in Israel where they have actual laws that protect those people. They have zero laws to protect you in those Arab countries. A gay person would be uh, killed because that's the law, that if they find out you're homosexual, you have, that's the death penalty. That's, what you're, that's who you're claiming are better than these Israelis just because they're white, are people who were in their country, it's legal to beat their wives because they have Sharia law. And the Quran says that a man should beat his wife. That's what you're supporting. I don't want to support those kind of people. And I just refuse to be silent about the fact that it's ludicrous for people to claim just because Palestinians are brown that their history doesn't matter and that their actions as human beings on this earth don't matter. You know, like I said, they have genocided people. They have enslaved Africans for 1,400 years they have done all kinds of things and continue right now with the society that they have. And so it's unfair. And I'm not saying that what's happening to them is right because I don't feel that it's right what's happening to them. I don't feel that um, I want Palestine to have their own state. I want them to have equal rights and all of that. I'm not against that. What I'm saying, though, is that it's absurd when people in the West try to pretend like these are the good guys and these are the bad guys. Those Palestinians are calling you nigger more than any Israeli is, I promise you. They, you can't even get a job there. You would have to go to Israel. Why do you think black people are running to Israel by the thousands? Why do you think that is? They're going there because they know black Israelis live good and live high on the hog. So, you know, none of that ever gets discussed. And it's frustrating for those of us blacks like Ayan Hirsi Ali, me, Francis Bach, us from North and East Africa who are from that whole Arab Afro climate. It's just frustrating for us to be um, degraded and called out of our names because we don't take up the same thing that black Americans do on this issue. We will never join with uh, Arab Islam. You know, we have too many reasons why we shouldn't. But black Americans need to learn the history of that region for the black people and stop focusing on identifying with the Arabs. You know, the Palestinians are not your family. You don't need to be trying to identify with them instead of the black men in Yemen and Saudi Arabia and Lebanon who are literally slaves who are ignored and totally, and those men are working 18 hours a day building tunnels, doing all the hard handiwork. And if they even look at an Arab woman, they will kill those men. 
And why is that to be ignored? Why is that okay? Why are we as black people not interested in that going on? They have petting zoos in these Arab countries. You can go on YouTube and look up the zoo in Libya. Just type that into YouTube. And you'll see where a black American woman, she had a secret little camera in her purse, and she filmed the whole zoo with the Arabs petting the black people that are locked in the zoo. I mean, and this is our own country. This is our land where people are making petting zoos and keeping us in it. And the people wow. doing it, they're not, yeah, they're not white Jews. They're Arabs. So, you know, that needs to be looked at and addressed. And um, that's my whole spiel of what I have to say about, you know, Israel, Palestine. I will always take the side of Israel against the Arab Muslims, always. Well, I'm I'm glad that I that I asked you about that because with you being as knowledgeable as you are about the the whole subject and the fact that you actually lived in Israel, it's nice you know to hear somebody who actually lived in that region speak about it and right. you know to give us so much information. I'm definitely going to look more into that. But one of the yeah. things that you mentioned, one of the things that you mentioned was Black Americans identifying with people who live in Palestine, and you know I know this is a controversial subject. But I, I kind of have to ask this one. I know that you're, for what I understand, your husband is Jewish. Right. Now, a lot of black Americans feel that they are the true Hebrews of the Bible, you know, and there's a lot of talk about the lost tribes of Israel and stuff like that. Do you believe that black Americans could be a part of the lost tribes of of Israel? Or do you think that that's just a lot of talk? I think black Americans come from the kingdoms of West and Central Africa. I think that Queen Tinkatakur II, who is called the mother of the black Americans, is the beginning of them as a creed. I think the black Americans are a new tribe. They're like 400 years old, which is a baby. Um, they're a new tribe because white people forced them here and forced them to blend and mix and become something else. Like, for instance, when they came over on the ships, they made Fulani mate with Mandingo. Whatever tribe was the enemy of the other, they made those any enemy tribes mate. And that created black American people. Now, the thing is, with black Americans, they refused to let them have their language and their names, and anything that would link them to their greatness. They wanted to convince and brainwash them that they're inferior and that they're niggers and that they should just, you know, be slaves. That's how you get a slave, is you trick them into thinking that they're nobody. And in reality, like I said, these, when the slave trade first started, there were African kings who were selling, like, the criminals in jail and stuff. That's how it started at first. Just 3% of those first, but after that first 3% were sold by African kings, and those were mainly like thieves and, you know, criminals in African society, then the whites came and colonized those countries, took over them, and then the other 97% of the slaves are good, actual African citizens who were taken into bondage. Kings and queens were taken into bondage. We have Queen Ambi. We have the children of Queen Tinker de Kerr II were some of the very first black American slaves in Vermont and Maine and all up in uh, the north part of America. And all of that is who black America is. 